Next week, um, Asus is releasing its brand new lineup of Z590 powered motherboards and I spent the past two weeks roaming the entire net universe to gather as much information as possible so to inform you better on what to expect. Now, today we are previewing the Prime Z590A from Asus, probably the most versatile board it has to offer. Gamers, professionals, counter creators, this thing is supposed to hit all of your sweet spots. And sweet lord, does it hit that nice sweet spot. <sighs> The Prime series is Asus um, entry-level kind of a motherboard and that A at the very end means that it's a little bit more premium, giving that versatile feel I was talking about in the beginning. And it does have to balance a very delicate act between having as many features to, 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 to cater to as many people as it can and still keep a moderate price tag and on top of which it's a very important generation for Intel since it starts or marks its debut into the PCIe4 uh, integration world which is a bad time. Now starting with the obvious we are dealing with a 6 PCB layered ATX board which was fully expected coming from a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard especially knowing that 6 PCB layers will heavily impact the signal integrity of our PCIe lanes and also benefit our uh, VRM heat dissipation. CPU socket wise, we got an LGA 1200 CPU socket which will support both 10th and 11th generation of Intel Core processors. Worth noting, only the incoming 11th generation CPU is PCIe 4.0 enabled, which has its importance since it will feed our several components with double the bandwidth the PCIe 3 standard can. VRM wise, we have 1650 amps power stages for a total of 800 amps or organized in eight twin phases, seven of which are CPU centric. So definitely not the 1120 amps we saw on the Strix last weeks, but definitely quite a bit more than its previous iteration. And 700 amps is about uh, the right amount of power to juice out every bit of silicon power out of your processor. Also having that many power stages will spread the CPU load over a wider area, naturally avoiding higher temperatures. Add to that some beefy double contact RM heatsinks, 6 PCB layers and you can expect to see a heck of a durable and performant motherboard. Chipset wise we are dealing with a brand new Z590 chipset from Intel. Yes we are. Yes, we are. Is it PCIe 4.0? Not really. And it does have its importance because I've been hearing over and over and over again that the Z590 chipset was PCIe 4.0. It does support PCIe 4.0, but it does not have any PCIe 4.0 lanes, which is a huge difference. It can use your processor, your PCIe 4.0 11th generation core Intel processor lanes and redirect it all over your motherboard, but it does not have any itself. And now, is that a bad thing? Well, not automatically. Since our CPU takes care of all the PCIe 4.0 lanes, our chipset can remain at a cool 6 watt of heat signature. So no need of an active and expensive chipset cooling solution as seen on the old PCIe 4.0 X570 chipset. But more important than its fake PCIe 4.0 support, uh, the Z590 chipset brings in an upgraded DMI link which brings 8 gigabyte per second of direct link from the chipset to the processor double than what was available on its previous generation and which will obviously heavily impact and benefit all of the chipset fed components around your board. Like the brand new two channel 3.2 second generation plugs which will be able to output up to 20 gigabit per second of data and no it's not called USB 4.0 Howard Brian, get over it. Back to the memory, our Prime Z490A can support up to 128GB of DDR4RAM in a dual channel configuration, overclockable up to a whooping unbuffered 5333MHz, about 533MHz more than its previous generation and exactly the same speed than available on most of the ROG Maximus lineup, which is a very good sign. But 
Uh, worth noting, this kind of speed is only obtainable on a single stick configuration. If you start to populate all of your RAM slots, the speed will incrementally decrease all the way down to a bottom 3.8, 3.6 gigahertz. Now staying in the memory, our Prime Z490A can support no less than three M.2 solid state drive, which is one more M.2 solid state drive connectors than on its previous iteration. But there is a catch. Coupled with a 10th generation processor, only two M.2 solid state drive will be working at a PCIe 3.0 bandwidth level, meaning up to 32 gigabit per second. To have the three M.2 solid state drive working, you will need an 11th generation core CPU. In addition, the CPU fed M.2 solid state drive will be swapping data at PCIe 4 bandwidth level, meaning up to a whopping 64 gigabit per second. So obviously perfect for a bootable drive and a sizable upgrade coming uh, from Asus on its prime level motherboards. In all cases, these sticks will get very hot very quickly and Asus thought of that and has equipped two of them with large and thermo padded heatsinks and do a great job at keeping them away from thermo throttling. Export wise, we have three PCIe 16 slots and a bachelor PCIe slot. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can deliver up to 16 full bus speed. In a dual GPU configuration, bandwidths will be split in an 8 by 8 PCIe configuration configuration hence the metallic reinforcements. Now the last 16 PCIe slot has been capped at 4 bus speed no matter what, so not really GPU friendly and that is why I question the fact that uh, uh, Asus decided to add a metallic reinforcement on it. I really think this is much more of a visual marketing stunt than anything else because you really don't want to put a video card on that thing, it's uh, yeah, just ignore it. Now the PCIe standard will vary depending on which processor you will couple this board with. With the 10th generation core CPU, all of the PCIe export will run at PCIe 3.0 standard, meaning one gigabyte per second bandwidth per PCIe lane. But couple the board with the incoming Rocket Lake S 11th generation core CPU and our two first PCIe slots will see their bandwidths doubled to two gigabyte per second per lane. But as usual in my reviews, I have to note the fact that all our modern video cards, either Nvidia or AMD, do not yet have the capacity to produce enough bandwidth to go beyond the PCIe 3.0 standard. So don't expect any kind of performance gain uh, if you go on PCIe 4 on this one. It's great for future proofing, but really nothing else. Now, let's quickly note the presence of our usual six SATA ports able to swap data to that slow but reliable six gigabit per second. But more importantly, let's move on to our back IO, which does feature a padded integrated back plate, fully expected at that price range. And starting from the left, we have a 1.4 display port and a 2.0 HDMI output, allowing 4K at 60 frames per second, which is a good thing since our 11th generation Intel Core processor is coming with the next generation Intel integrated graphics. Uh, I think it'll be called the HD 730, which should be able to give us some 4K uh, gameplay performances. Next, we have four USB second generation, five USB 3.2 second generation, including two type C, and for the first time, a dual channel type C, which will be able to output up to 20 gigabit per second. Definitely a noticeable upgrade when compared to the previous iteration of this board, the Prime Z490. A, and especially important for more professional minded people while looking for a more solid bandwidthy kind of feature on their motherboards, if that makes any sense. Next, we have a 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN, which is an upgrade we already saw on the Z490 version of this board. And finally, we have our 8-channel S1220A Realtek audio codec, which is about the best audio codec uh, available right now out there. It is not the brand new Realtek 4080s as we could find it on the ROG series, but still a wonderful piece of audio integration which also takes full advantage of the six PCB layer since both left and right audio channel have been traced on dedicated PCB sheets. Great to protect it from any kind of signal bleeding or signal interferences and really gives almost a perfect both playing and recording comfort even in non-grounded houses such as mine. All and for all, it is a very good looking and, and well-featured back IO. I will do regret the fact that we have no uh, USB third generation, the five gigabit plugs, and I feel that we 
Asus could have added some instead of some of the second generation plugs, which I believe is a bit overrepresented here. All right, now front panel connector wise. Well, nothing new here. We have our two USB front panel connectors, great for monitoring, our USB third generation and a 10 gigabit front panel connector type C, totally expected at that price range. Let's note the presence of a Thunderbolt 4 front panel connector, which will allow us up to 40 gigabit of transfer, but more noticeably up to 60 watt of output power, a novelty that the Z590 chipset brings to this generation of motherboards. Cooling wise, we have no less than eight PWM fans placed in different locations of our board for easier access. Two of them can support dedicated water pumps for even the most outrageous custom water cooling situation and uh, which will absolutely please about all of the enthusiasts out there but I will do regret as usual the lack of hybrid or the absence of hybrid fan connectors which would add further enthusiastness to our board. Troubleshooting wise we do have an easy debugger to guide us through the main booting stages of our board as well as a power soldered button definitely adequate to run and operate any PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard. Finally the Prime Z590 a would not be an ASUS motherboard without an indecent, unsecured amount of RGB support on it. Starting with a massive RGB strip hidden behind the IU roof, another one hidden under our chipset heat shield, and no less than four RGB connectors, three of which are addressable. In short, enough lighting to melt the North Pole. Now, in conclusion, the Prime Z590 will go for about $280, 60 bucks more than its predecessor. And the whole question is, is it worth it? Is, is, is it worth the premium? Well, the answer is not that easy. I'll give it a maybe. If you already have a Prime Z490 or any Z490 powered motherboard, chances are that what you have already does everything the Prime Z590 brings on the table, including the PCIe 4.0 support to CPU fed component. Maybe not as much, but still not enough to motivate a $60 premium. Now, where it is really worth it is if you are starting from scrap or upgrading from an older system. In that case, the Prime Z590 is actually an excellent value. It is about the widest range motherboard on the market today. It really does it all very well. Either pro gamers, enthusiasts or professionals, the Prime Z590A really does a great job at making you feel that it's been engineered just for you. In short, the Prime Z590A does bring a lot on the table at still somewhat of an acceptable pricing. So either if you're a first time builder or looking at uh, upgrading an older build, well, there's really nowhere else your money wants to be.